shell oil, exploiting people and polluting our planet. It's called gas flaring, and Shell won't stop. Shell's flares contain toxic chemicals like benzene and are estimated to have caused respiratory illness in thousands of Nigerian children. Shell made $30 billion in profits last year at the expense of our children, our families, our planet. Go to shellguilty.com and make them stop. World Bank officials met with the Brazilian government this week to tout a Canadian model for capturing gas produced during oil extraction. Around the world, about 150 billion cubic meters of gas is burned off or flared each year. That's roughly enough to supply the entire U.S. economy for three months. And as Dave Sims reports, countries that get tough on flaring could also cut their greenhouse gases. Natural gas flares in Africa so big they can be seen from space. This is one of the largest collections of gas flares anywhere in the world. Companies burn gas associated with oil wells when there's no domestic market for it. Alberta faced this a century ago. The poet Rudyard Kipling described Medicine Hat with its gas reserves as the town with all hell for a basement. In the 30s the province started to regulate flaring. It now has a voluntary system where companies, landowners, and environmentalists collaborate. 96% of all gas is conserved. In the last nine years, that saved 7.2 million tons of carbon. That's equivalent to one and a half million vehicles off the roads in Alberta for an entire year. And that is attracting world interest. There are some places in the world where oil is produced and virtually no associated gas is flared or vented. Featured in this documentary, broadcast on the BBC. It contributes uh, significantly to, uh, to global warming. The World Bank has taken up this cause, trying to encourage investment in a low-carbon economy. That's very similar to what was done in, in Alberta, and, and now we are trying to take it to other countries around the world. Countries like Nigeria, Russia, Angola, and Brazil. This gas is often burned next to communities that have no electricity. Already, it's led to small-scale projects to generate power. This model can be applied in countries around the world, but what it takes is a willingness. Global fairing produces huge amounts of greenhouse gases. Almost 400 million tons of CO2 being emitted each year. In other words, if we did nothing but cut flaring around the globe, that alone would more than meet the targets of the Kyoto Protocol. Dave Sims, CBC News.